Grand Trunk Western number 4070 is an S3A class, a 282 USRA light Mikado steam locomotive. She was originally numbered 474 and was put together by Alco in December of 1918 and is connected to New York. And she was part of the United States Railroad Administration's USRA order for 25 light Mikado locomotives that were to be assigned to the Grand Trunk Railway. She was mostly used for revenue service to pull freight and commuter trains out of Detroit, Michigan. In 1925, the railroad was reorganized, however, as Grand Trunk Western, and they were under Canadian national ownership. She was renumbered to 3734, and she was actually given some hefty modifications at this point, provided with an extended smoke box and an enclosed coffin feed water heater. She would continue reliable service over the following decades. In 1948, she was actually selected as a backup locomotive for President Harry Truman's re-election train, which did run through Michigan. In the 1950s, she was assigned to operate out of Durand, Michigan, though she would suffer an accident around this time. On June 9th, 1955, she fell into a turntable. This accident happened because her air pump had failed, though she was quickly repaired. And in 1958, she was rebuilt at the Grand Truck Western's Battle Creek, Michigan shops, provided with a larger tender, and she was renumbered for the last time to 4070, as Canadian National had a new fleet of RS-18 diesel locomotives, and one of them was going to be given 3734. Her last assignment would be to pull gravel trains between Pontiac and Oxford, Michigan, and she would finally be retired from service at the end of steam on the Grand Truck Western on March 29th, 1960. She pulled her final revenue train from Pontiac to Durand and discontinued commercial steam operations that same month. She wasn't scrapped, however. At first, she was stored in Durand and then in a nonprofit group located in Middleville, Michigan, known as the National Museum of Steam Propulsion, tried to raise funds to acquire her, some funds being gained from ticket sales from excursions that were done with Grand Trunk Western 6323. They actually scheduled 4070 to pull her own excursion trains throughout Michigan, beginning with one on July 29, 1961, on the New York Central Main Line between Grand Rapids and Jackson. But that would never happen. Every single one of their plans with 4070 fell through, probably due to lack of funds, and the whole organization would dissolve. This put 4070 in an awkward position, but by the end of 1961, she was purchased again by a man named Lewis S. Keller, who was a member of the National Railway Historical Society's Iowa chapter. In May of 1966, the Midwest Railway Historical Foundation of Cleveland, Ohio, reached an agreement with Keller to lease 4070 for 10 years and restore her to operating condition. She was moved into storage under the Cleveland Union Terminal. In June of 1968, she was moved again to the Chicago and Western Indiana's 47th Street Roundhouse in Chicago, Illinois, where the Midwest Railway Historical Foundation would contract with a man to help restore the locomotive. That man was named Richard Jensen. No. Why are you... No! Every time this man comes up, something terrible happens. As part of the arrangement, Jensen was allowed to use 4070 to pull two passenger excursions on the Grand Trunk Western's mainline. And to his credit, him and his crew did actually get 4070 up and running again. On November 3rd, she was put under steam for the first time in over eight years. And she did pull an excursion between Dearborn Station in Chicago and South Bend, Indiana which actually would commemorate her own 50th birthday. On March 23rd, 1969, she pulled a second Grand Trunk Western excursion between Chicago and South Bend, but this time things did not go well. She was plagued with multiple issues. For one thing, she ran out of water while in motion, which is actually very alarming, and she broke down from poor quality coal. Then the excursion's conductors and brakemen refused to board after being left at Valparaiso by mistake while their legal working limits ran out. As a result, 4070 had to sit there to wait for a new crew to arrive. All this compounded, and 4070 had to be towed 
by a diesel-powered freight train, returning to Chicago over nine hours late. It was a disaster. Job to your work, Jensen. Really, just, just, just great. But on August 31st, 4070 would pull her first official MRHF excursion from Erie to Greenville, Pennsylvania, on the Bessemer and Lake Erie mainline. And that went much better. In 1971, MRHF would buy out their own lease with Keller so they could gain full ownership of 4070. And from 1971 to 1973, they would also lease a one-mile spur from the Bessemer and Lake Erie at Kennetwood Lake Park. And 4070 was used to pull summer weekend excursions on that line. They actually somewhat had kind of a heritage railroad in that manner. But they were unsatisfied with the length of that spur. I mean, it was only a mile, which is fair. So they started searching for a longer railroad to run excursions. They then approached the Chessie system to operate regular steam excursion trains on their former Baltimore and Ohio Valley Division between Cleveland and Akron. Local community leaders did support the idea, and that would lead to the formation of the Cuyahoga Valley Preservation and Scenic Railway Association. Jesse's chairman, a man named Cyrus Eaton, also was behind the idea and allowed the foundation trackage rights. 4070 would be relocated to a lease stall at the former Baltimore and Ohio Clark Avenue Roundhouse, located in Cleveland. On June 26, 1975, 4070 pulled the new Cuyahoga Valley Line's inaugural train from Brookside Park outside the Cleveland Zoo to Hale Farm and Village. During the first operational seasons, every excursion train was mandated to be assisted by a Chessie diesel locomotive as a backup in case 4070 suffered a mechanical issue. But MRHF proved her reliability, so that requirement was lifted in later years. In September of 1975, 4070 was moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and pulled three excursions for Steam Tours Incorporated on the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie mainline between Pittsburgh and Brownsville. During the first excursion, the fireman was actually struggling to get the locomotive's duplex stoker to work, so he had to resort to hand-firing her for the remainder of the run, though that did not cause any major issues. In May of 1977, 4070 pulled two more excursions for steam tours while double-heading with Reading 2102 on the Conrail main line between Pittsburgh and Altoona, Pennsylvania. En route, they would travel along Horseshoe Curve, but during the return run of the first excursion, the 4070 snapped her right eccentric rod at speed while climbing that curve, and as such, the excursion had to be completed behind diesel locomotives. The damage was repaired, however, and 4070 completed the second doubleheader without any issues. But on June 10th, 1979, she derailed as she was pulling a CVL train at a rail yard in Akron, and a Chessie diesel locomotive had to return the train to Cleveland, while two others had to re-rail 4070. In 1982, she pulled an excursion train on the CVL while being fitted with a headboard that stated the American Flyer. In September of 1983, she actually temporarily masqueraded as a Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy locomotive, and she was ferried to the New York and Lake Erie Railroad in South Dayton, New York, for filming of a movie called The Natural. It was a baseball film starring Robert Redford. In 1985, however, she was removed from service. Jessie had since merged into a new company called CSX, and they had obtained permission to abandon the Valley Division entirely, which crippled CVL's operations. In 1987, the National Park Service would actually purchase the Valley Division with the intention of making the right-of-way an integral part of the Cuyahoga Valley National Recreation Area. And CVL was able to resume operations the following year. 4070 would continue service until 1990, when she ran into some further mechanical difficulties, and these were much more major. A thorough inspection showed that she was in really bad shape. She needed a major rebuild, and the cost of doing that would, of course, be exorbitant. As such, 4070 had to be retired from excursion service entirely and the CVL went on to operate their own excursions without MRHF's assistance. They proceeded to start disassembling 4070, as they did plan on fixing her, but work was slow going throughout the 1990s. 
MRHF was having financial difficulties, and then a stall collapse occurred at the Cleveland Roundhouse. All this compounded to slow work on 4070 even further until it stopped entirely. But hope isn't lost for this engine. She definitely had a lot of misfortune, all things considered. But in 2011, the process of restoring her to operational condition was resumed by members of the Midwest Railway Preservation Society, or MRPS. The group wanted to put her back to the way she was, but in order to do that, they had to figure out how much work they really had to do. Her boiler and tender both underwent ultrasonic testing, and a lot of components were found to be in need of repair. Her dry pipe and front and rear tube sheets all needed to be replaced. The smoke box, firebox, frame, running gear, tender, and many other pieces would need work before she was able to steam again. Her restoration was estimated at the time to cost about, oh, you know, $1,290,000. So, you know, no big deal. But as of 2024, the MRPS has still been plugging away at it. They reorganized their portion of the roundhouse for a more suitable workspace to continue efforts, and have also seen a crack in her frame. A crack in her frame? Where'd she get that? Well, that was left over from her 1955 turntable incident. Remember when she fell? Yeah, she'd been running with that crack this whole time, and no one knew about it. As it stands, it's unknown if and when 4070 will be able to run again, but honestly, I think she deserves a second chance. She had a lot of good runs, and yeah, she was a little clumsy, a little awkward sometimes, the occasional screw-up, Jensen was involved, you know, terrible things, but perhaps someday she'll get another chance. And personally, I'd like to see it. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, and Zach A1, Arthur Roy, Brian, Jack Carson's Road Videos, Lord Alpha 44, A Person 723, Royal Hustle 2060, Isaac for 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Redline, NS Productions 8104, Wheeljack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Ohio Trucker 1, Andrew Bowen, Josh Johnson, Caleb Rainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Mr. Sleepy, Travis Delinsky, Jared Brussel, Joshua Long, Hannah Bird, Amtrak 2024 Productions, Tommy Rossini, Ben McCullough, Panzer Kitsun 131-232, Mark Holding, Dr. Racer 78, G Wiz, Mr. Terrell, Liam Wright, Aiden DeGro, Metal for Life Guy, and of course, my dad. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.